just to pray. If you want to just welcome everybody and pray. Does that sound like you're okay? Yeah, I'm good with that. Good morning. My name is Brother Woody, Christian Life Assembly of God Church. We want to welcome you. And, uh, you know, we love the Lord, and it's good to be in His house this morning. I know we're very few right here this morning. But, you know, we're two or three are gathered. He's in the midst. And uh, I praise you, watch from where you're at, that uh, you love the Lord and that you just put all your cares and trust in Him. I'm going to pray uh, for this service this morning. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We, Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord, you've bestowed upon us. Lord, the opportunity, Lord, to just gather in one accord, Lord, in one mind, one mind. Lord, in all the needs, Lord, if we have any needs here this morning, Lord, and we lift them up to you, Lord, and you are able and you are more than capable, Lord, of reaching each and meeting each and every need, Lord, here this morning. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those who are not able to uh, uh, get out at this time, Lord, I pray, Lord, you would just put a special blessing on them, Lord. Let them know that you care for them and you love them, Lord. And we will look to you for each and every need we have in our lives, Lord. Help us to continue to love one another, Lord. And Lord, we love you. And we just thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise his holy name. Praise God. We're going to start out with a couple of old hymns and old rugged cross.
so much, Brother Woody and Sister Linda. Could you just right where you are just praise Him? Could you just lift Him up wherever you are and you're, you're seeing this today? He deserves the praise. Jesus. It's Mother's Day and we're thankful for our mothers and we give them praise, but He's the one who deserves all our praise. You deserve the glory, dear God. You deserve the praise. Oh, be blessed in this this far say to this point dear God yes. and you're going to lead us on and you're going to lead us home oh we owe it all to you all the glory and all the majesty you deserve it today and we praise you Lord you deserve it dear God oh thank you Lord for all the good things we enjoy thank you for our mothers thank you dear God for the victory we worship you in Jesus name we're going to pray for a few needs here for just a moment. As it says behind me here, welcome to Christian Life Assembly, our broadcast today. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, please, as we always like to say, comment and let us know how things are. If you can hear us or if there's technical issues or just anything else. We want to pray today for, uh, for Sherry. We want to lift her up to the Lord. She had foot surgery uh, Friday. We want to ask God's blessings. We also want to pray for uh, Donna today. Uh, God knows the needs. We pray for Donna. David Lanier, we want to, I want to mention him. Uh, he, he was in the hospital. He's out now, but he still needs our prayers, as he told me. Sister Mary Lou, we want to pray for Mary Lou today. Uh, same thing. She's having some trouble sleeping, digesting her food, uh, some different things. But God, God is good, and we believe for just a peace in her body today. And we also want to pray for Debbie, uh, Linda's daughter. We want to pray for her, that the Lord will minister to her, find another vehicle. And so if you would, if you have a need today too, we want to agree with you. Whatever. So for those of us who are here, and let's just agree together where distance doesn't limit God. Amen? Amen. So let's pray together and agree. Father, we just agree today, dear God, for the needs of the folks watching right now. But Lord, you are the only minister, but we believe you, dear God, to minister. We believe you, O oh God, 
to work in every one of these, dear God, healing bodies, dear God, delivering lives from the, the power of sin and, and hell. We believe, dear God, you deliver to your precious Son, dear God, who, Lord, you in your kingdom of light that you have. We believe for these things, dear God. Our lost loved ones, we believe for them, dear God. We believe that whatever the need, if any is discouraged, and dear God, are, are just uh, not sure what's going to happen, Financially, we believe and agree with those, dear God. You are still Jehovah Jireh, and we believe for every need to be met. We ask, Father God, that as we come before you bringing these needs, we mentioned some today, sharing with much for David. We pray for him, dear God, the healing and his body for Mary Lou, a peace that passes all understanding for Debbie, dear God, wisdom and vision for her vehicle. We believe for all these and others, dear God, represented in our body. And we believe as to hear great testimonies when we come back together soon of how you heard and answered these prayers, dear God. We commit all these needs to you today. We love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to be with you today. And uh, we're um, again welcome. We just want to wish everybody a very wonderful and blessed Mother's Day, and I hope everyone enjoys it. And uh, Sister Ruth Cross is going to be sharing with us in just a minute. We've, we've had the uh, awesome privilege she's shared with us the last couple of Mother's Days, and we're glad to have her back and share it with us. But I just want to mention a few things to us. Um, we do want to, as many have probably heard, things are changing rapidly as it comes to church reopening. And uh, I don't want to just go come up here and stand up here off the cuff and tell you exactly what we're going to do just yet. We want to try to put it through, put some, put some, put it to the Lord and see how it's going to go. But very soon we'll be back together. So stay tuned. Whatever medium you're watching this on, we'll try to have this as an announcement as to just exactly what we're going to do. Our church leadership has asked us to have a plan. We'll also put that out as to how we want to do things. Um, and we want to make sure everybody's safe. Yes. We're looking forward to being back together and rejoicing together with him. And uh, and uh, he's going to keep us safe. You know, whenever we do come back together, you know, we're going to still have these services. And I want to mention we're still hoping to put Ricky back where he is taking this this morning. And I uh, appreciate him. And we're going to still hope to put these out there. And for some reason, you didn't feel safe. But we do encourage everybody. Uh, we'll be, uh, we look forward to being back together really soon. And so just stay tuned with that. And we'll let you know. This tonight, I do want to let you know, I'll be presenting a message from my house. So uh, that'll be from tonight, and so uh, we won't be here tonight. And then beyond that, we'll talk about it, and we'll see how things are going to be looking for us, and we'll try to make that announcement for us. One announcement we did, one I want to mention, too, that I found out this week. We were looking for some of our kids to go to camp, and uh, for those that might be watching that would be connected with, um, they delayed all the camps that we were looking to attend in June at least, and they're not sure about July, so that, that's in a flux. So just want to put that out for any that were wondering about camps. Uh, we do hope they can have them. It is an awesome time for, for God to minister to the kids, but we'll see what, how things go. And uh, we will, I'm talking to our board members, if any of those are watching, we'll definitely need to have something soon where we'll talk about things going forward. And so I'll put that out to all those as well. All right. Uh, there's probably something I'm forgetting. Uh, no, I, I think I think we're good. And you know, if you did want to, did you have that slide, brother, about our address? If you did want to give, this is it right here. If you want to send an offering, PO Box 66, Russellville, Kentucky, and uh, just uh, send that to us. We we love to do that. Send us a letter. We like letters and cards too. That's that's awesome. So we are, if you want to know where our church is, 25 Rock Lane in Russell, just three miles east of Russellville. And uh, that's where we're worshiping today. And um, so again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, it's a bright day. That's why I got to know it's a, it's a day to celebrate what God has given us with our mothers. And we wanted to have a very special mother to share with us here in just a moment, Sister Ruth Cross. She's been a blessing to the church, has ministered so, in so many ways. Projects continue on here. For those that are coming back soon, I believe you'll be very pleased to see how things are coming along as far as the facilities are concerned and uh, get, getting better and better. So uh, Sister Ruth has, has ministered for many years. She's uh, very much a, uh, I believe you're ordained with the Church of God, aren't you? And 
Yeah, she's credentialed with the Church of God, and she is very much a minister. And uh, we're very, very blessed to have her and be able to share. So, Sister Ruth, whenever you're ready, she's going to share. And God bless everyone today. And she's going to just take it and close us out. And she has she sees. God bless you. Good morning. It is such a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank everyone that has tuned in this morning. I want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Yes. You know, you didn't have to give birth to be a mother. A lot of women are mothers by proxy. And I just want to thank them for what they've done, even Amen. for spiritual mothers. Amen. Because if it wasn't for spiritual mothers, a lot of us would not be here. Amen. So I just want to thank them this morning. And this morning, as I, I bring the little bit of message, I want to tell you right off, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a preacher, I'm not a teacher. But what the Lord laid on my heart, he woke me in the night back about two months ago. And uh, I basically am going to be telling a story. And the story actually starts in 2 Kings. It will start in 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37. I will not read it, but I want it up on the board. So if you and look at the story, I would prefer you follow along because I want to tell you right off, never take what a person in right here stands for granted. That's read true. it for yourself. Amen. That's right. So Amen. as we start, the story opens up, and it is Elisha. And Elisha and his servant would go into this town of Shushan. And in the town, there was this noble woman. And the only thing they ever call her is uh, the Shumite woman. She was a well off. And she would invite them in to eat. And every time he would come by, he would stop in and he would eat with her. And after a while, she asked her husband, she said, I would like to build him a little room up on the porch. I would like to put in this room a bed, a desk, a lamp, and a chair, so when he comes his way, he will have a place to rest. Mm -hmm. So she uh, talks him to it. He, they make this little room. And Elijah very much is, is thankful for this place. He knows that he has a place to rest his head. So he comes into town and he goes into the room and he's uh, laying on the bed. Now you can just almost see it in your head. He's just relaxing, you know, probably pillows. He's relaxing. And he looks at his servant and he says, I would like to do something for this Shumite woman. I would like to bless her, call her. So he calls her in and, he, and he's like, is there anything, basically my word, anything I can do? She was of noble character, knew everything. She goes, I'm good. I, I, I'm among, I dwell among my people, I'm good. And so she goes out and his servant says, she has no child. So he says, call the Shumite woman back in. So he calls her back in and she stands before him and he says, With this, within this year, you shall have a son. She said, oh no Lord, do not tell me that, pretty much. I'm okay right where I'm at. Don't tell me something that might not happen. Don't lie to me. But within the year, she has a son. And when the child grows, and it doesn't say how old he is, but as he's grown, grown a little, he goes to the field with his father, the servants, and they are reaping. And as he's standing says to one servant, take him to his mother. And they take him into the house and they lay him in the mother's arms. And it said that she held him in her lap till around noon and he died. Hmm. Now she picks him up out in her lap and takes him up to the porch to Elisha's room. And she lays him on the bed. And she comes down and she looks at her husband and she said, I, I need a donkey. And he looks at her and he said, why? It's not the new moon. It's not the Sabbath. And she said, I want to go meet the man of God. And, and he just looks at her and she says, it's all well. Now, I don't know about y'all, but my mind, I love to read these stories, but I like to think. And I can just see all the servants going, what is she doing? Yeah, her child has just passed away. What is she doing? But all she can say is, it is well. So 
she gets the donkey and she tells the servant, this is what I hear her saying. Go as fast as you can. Do not stop. I don't care if my hair is flying. I don't care. Keep going because we're going to the man of God. Don't stop unless I say to. And then she comes up, Elijah sees her coming, and he says, that's a sheep's night woman. And he hollers out, is it all well? And she says, it is, all, is it all well with your husband? It is all well. Is it all well with you? It is all well. Is it all well with your son? It is all well. Now we're sitting here and we're thinking, it's not all well. She just laid him upstairs. He's, he's gone. He's died. But she says, it's all well. It's all well. And so Elijah, he's like, she is troubled. And he tells his servant, go to her. And, you know, and she wrote, she keeps coming. And she comes to Elijah and the She is broken in spirit. She is broken hearted. And she's like, did I ask the son of you? Did I ask the son of you? No. And he knows. And, and Elijah says in the story, he says, the Lord has hid this from me. I don't know. He didn't know what she was growing. And she, so he looks at his servant. He says, take my staff and go. 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 Do not stop. Don't greet nobody. Don't speak to nobody. Go to her house. And she won't leave him because she pretty much says, I'm not going to you go. Because when you need something, you go directly to God. Amen. You know, it's okay to go to our pastors. It's okay to go to other people. But sometimes you've got to go. And see, back then, they didn't have Jesus that they could pray to. True. They had to go. And she went to the closest thing she could find, which was the man of God, Elisha. And he, she's not leaving. So he goes. And uh, the servant, now I don't know about y'all, I can just see this man running. And he's headed to the house. And he goes in and, and coming back out. And Elijah and the, the woman's coming. He says, he's asleep. Which, you know, he was dead, but we know that. And Elijah goes on up, and I think he was a hurry and a scurvy, and up the steps into the room, and he closed the doors, and there's that child uh, laying on the bed. And he takes his body and he lays across the child. And it said he's face to face and hand to hand. And he breathes into that child's face. And it said his body became warm. Not alive, but his body became warm. And I love it. It said he got up. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm a pacer. And when I pray, I pace. But it just almost gives this insinuation that Elijah is praying and pacing. Because when you're seeking God, sometimes you can't sit still. You've got to search. And he's pacing. And he, get, and he goes back. And he lays up against that young man again. He lays across him. And he said that the, little, the boy sneezed seven times. Seven times. Seven is the what? If anyone knows numbers in the Bible, that is the number of completion. And he said, that child is warm and alive. And Elijah said, call the Shunammite woman. Call her in. And she comes in. And she falls down. And, and before she even goes to her son, she falls down at Elijah's feet. And she's thanking him. And then she picks up her, what the world would have said, dead. And she takes that baby down. Now, you know the servants had to be talking. You know the servants had to be gossiping, going, why is she not in there mourning? She ought to be mourning because in those days, mourning was very much. They mourned for days. They put on sackcloth, ashes. They mourned. But this woman did not mourn. This woman was determined to get the answer to her prayer because it was all well. You know why it was all well? She knew. Whatever. God was in control. Amen. Mm -hmm. God was in control. Mm -hmm. My next story that I want to tell is not a, in the Bible, but it is history. It was this uh, man, his name was Horatio, and his wife was named Anna, and the last name was Fat. And it was in the 1871, uh, 
And in 1862, they married. In 18, it's very prominent. He was a very rich man. He had made a lot of money. He was a lawyer. He was a business well. And it, he was the type of person. Him, him and Anna, whatever they did, was blessed. And God gave them four daughters. And, and 1881 was the year of the Chicago fire. And the fire came in and wiped out a lot of their money. And the things were getting a little bad for them. But God came along again and he blessed the two of them. So Horatio and, and Anna started prospering again. And in 1883, he thought that something good, that they would have a family vacation. They had four daughters and they were from the age of 10 years old to a year old. And so they decided they were going to take one of the big ships that were finally crossing the Atlantic to go from America to Europe. And he was going to take them on a cruise. He was going to take them on a cruise. And so at about the time it was for them to leave, something came up with his business and he did not get to go. But Anna takes her and, and her helpmate or nurse mate and her and the four girls and they get on this ship. Now, Anna was not an older woman, she was a young woman. She had only been married a few years and had the, God had blessed them with four children. They get on the ship and four days into the journey, an iron ship hits their ship. And Anna is knows that the ship is going down. And instead of panicking, she goes up to the bow of the ship and she takes the four babies and surrounds them in praise. And she said, God would if God would spare let me if God would spare them that he would would be if God would spare them, it would be if it would be his will. If not, let her endure whatever awaited her was her prayer. And it said that the ship went down within twelve minutes of being hit. Later they were coming and they were looking at the debris where the ship had went down. And floating on a piece of wood, unconscious and in bad, was Anna. The children were gone. The nurse was gone. But they found this woman. And out of all 300 and something people that were on the ship, only 28 survived. And Anna was one of them. And they brought her. She was unconscious. They pulled her into a small boat. The small boat took Anna. And she, they went to a larger one. And they went on into Wales. And when she got there, we're, now we're talking nine days later. So for 14 days or so, he don't know what's going on with her husband. He has heard, but he does not know. So she gets to where she can send a wire. It wasn't like today, texting, phone calls. She had to send a wire. And the wire became famous. And the wire, she says, saved alone, what shall I do? God gave me four dollars. Now they have been taken from me. But someday I will understand why. So Horatio gets the message and he gets on the next ship out. And it takes him a while. Four days after the ship it went down. He, his, the captain of the ship calls him and says, this is where your daughters were lost. And as he looks out upon the sea, and he's standing there, we all know, if, if anyone has been in church long enough, this is where the hymn, it is well with my soul is written. Because Horatio said, this is, he was actually had written poems. He did not actually write the song. It was later written into a song, but he wrote these words. When peace like a river that attendeth my way, when sorrows like bill roll, whatever my lot, I to say, it is well with my soul. 
And he goes on later to add more. It becomes a song. It's very, very popular. It's well with my song. But he wrote that, not knowing. I mean, this man knew hardship. He goes on in to meet Anna, and meets Anna. They come back across the, uh, and they try to make their life please. In three years, they have a, their first son. God gives them a son. And in 1887, the son, he was three years old, he dies of scarlet fever. Now Anna and Horatio have buried five children. But God blesses them and gives them two more children. And in 1881, when the last daughter was born, she was just months old, they decided they wanted to move to Jerusalem. And they take all their money and all they have and they move to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem they start a home. And the home is not really an orphan orphanage, but yet sort of. They bring in children who have lost parents, they, and they have Bible studies for the Jewish people to teach them about. They turned everything, all their loss, to give it all to the Lord. And they make this home, their home there. They even, after they've been there a few months, bring in a refugee. He was a young man, he's in his teens. They bring him in, and they fall so much in love with him, and, and knows he has no family, and they adopt. And out of and later he grew up, went to college. They sent him to college, and he became a very famous architect. Uh, no, uh, anthropologist. Anyway, Diggs, what do you call it? Uh, anthropologist. And he becomes famous and finds a lot of the stuff in Jerusalem today that is all in the museums of Jerusalem. But my story don't end there. Horatio, seven years after they get to Jerusalem, he dies suddenly. 59 years old. Now Anna is 14 years younger than him. She is a young woman in Jerusalem with two small children under the age of nine. A, a adopted son that's in his teens and Horatio dies. But she, this, she chooses not to leave. She stays on and it becomes a very big thing in Jerusalem of support to Jewish people, Muslims, and Christians alike, to this day, it still stands. Anna lived until 1929. She was in her late 80s and never left, never married, but made it a, his call. The calling that they had then, she let it come. And all I can say is that she had the same attitude. This woman had the same attitude as the Shemite woman. It don't matter what happens. See, we're not in control of everything in our life. But it's how we face the circumstances is the way it is. You know, being a Christian, I'm an older woman. I've been a Christian. I was saved at eight years old. And there's, I'm not going to tell you that the moment that you get saved, is it a bed of roses or is everything going to be perfect? No, it's not. But there is one thing I'm going to tell you that it is well with my soul. I've Amen. had heartache, I've had bad diagnosis, but everything I've ever had, God has let me know that it is all well with my soul. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't matter what we face. There are people out there today that are facing sicknesses. They're facing uh, financial pain. This is a, a time in our life that the pain is of sickness, the pain of death, the pain of financial ruin, not knowing what tomorrow. But I want to tell you one thing. It can be well with your soul if Amen. you know Jesus. Exactly. If you know Jesus, it doesn't matter what you what the world looks like. It don't matter what tomorrow holds. But if you know Jesus, it is well. See, the little Shemite woman had this attitude. I'm going to get what I, I need from the man of God. And she received her son back. But Anna couldn't go down to the depth and receive her children back. But she knew it was all well that whatever it would be, God would take care of. Amen. That's where we need to be. Amen. You know, and if you don't know a God like that, 
Today is the day yes. that you can give your heart to God. And I'm not going to tell you that your life is going to change tomorrow physically or, or financially, but you're going to know a God that can get you through the pain because you will know at the end it is all well. Amen. All well Amen. with your soul. Amen. See, it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. Yes. It doesn't matter. This is my last day. You know, if, if I don't have great legacy and I've never invented anything, but if my children one day and my husband can say, she loved the Lord. That's all that matters. That's Amen. all that would ever matter. That it has been well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to pray. And out there, if there's anybody listening oh, that doesn't know the peace of God, even if you've been a Christian and you just want to ask him again to give you that peace that passes all understanding. You know, in Philippians 4, 9, it says, And the peace of God, which surpass all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. If you want that today, you can have it. Yes. You can have that peace. If you've known him for many years, and today you just want to say, God, remind me again of that peace, that no matter what, it is all well with my soul. You can have it today. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we pray and I thank you, God, that the ones that have known you, even if they're young Christians or they've known you for many, many years, the Lord, we assure them that it is all well with their soul, that we have no assurance of today or tomorrow, but we have the assurance in you that it is well with our soul. Yes. And if there's anyone out there right now that is listening who does not have that assurance. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. That they can give their heart to you. Father, that they will just ask you to fill them to God with that assurance. And then they can say, it is well with my soul. And we thank you, God. And we praise you, Lord, to God. Knowing to God that you hold our very future in your hand. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's good to have y'all here. I, if you have any questions, if anyone has given their heart to the Lord, contact yes. us. Yes. Write us a letter. Write it. The address is up here. We would love to hear from y'all. And I pray that y'all have a blessed day. And remember, God is in control. Amen. Amen.